Hi everyone, Maxon here. Welcome to my first video for the White March Part 2 since the expansion's release for Pillars of Eternity. Now in the first White March Part 1, the big mechanics change was to do with the tributes, and I've already done a video for that. In the second White March expansion, the big mechanics change is to do with skills, and that's going to be the topic of this video. Only two of the five skills within the game have actually received changes with the accompanying patches to the White March Part 2, uh, patch version 3 and its successors. So those skills are Athletics and Survival. The changes have been pretty significant though, so I will be mentioning all of those changes shortly. I'll also mention the other skills though, and what I would recommend you invest your skill points into in terms of different classes and different class builds. So let's start off with Athletics. In terms of conversations and scripted interactions, Athletics has actually stayed exactly the same. So for example, in a scripted interaction, if you are climbing up a wall, Athletics can be very useful in that, or in an interaction uh, via dialogue to uh, perhaps rush someone, Athletics is still useful in uh, that degree. That's exactly the same as it used to be. But Athletics has had its other uh, feature basically changed. What it used to do is diminish the negative effects of fatigue on your characters. Now the fatigue system has been completely changed, pretty much removed from the game entirely actually. It still exists partially with scripted interactions, you can gain fatigue uh, via them. And also it's been partially integrated into a new injury. Uh, feature which I'll show a bit later on. But its new role uh, actually happens within combat. So what it does is grant you an ability called Second Wind. Now if your character is injured you can basically use Second Wind to gain back some of your endurance. It's a per encounter ability so you can only do it once per combat and the amount of endurance you uh, regain uh, varies dependent on your athletic skill and you actually gain a base amount of uh, endurance that you always get, that's 20. And for every point of athletics you invest, you increase the second wind endurance amount by 5. You can see here if I increase that, it goes up to 40 and 45. I think uh, one of the, the patch notes actually said it was 4 endurance, but that's incorrect as you can clearly see here. So you can see the second win ability here, it's a per encounter as I mentioned. So if we right click it, we can see it in more detail. It's a fast uh, working encounter, so it's not instant sadly, but uh, fast is pretty good still. Now you may have noticed immediately that this is less than 35, which my character here should have had. The reason why it's less than 35 in this case is because that character actually has a really poor might value. So it's getting minus 24% to its healing. So having uh, the athletic skill really benefits characters that have a lot of might basically. Uh, since they will get more endurance out of their athletic skill. There's other ways you can actually increase uh, the bonus you get from uh, that athletic skill as well. Second Wind which I'll mention a bit more about later on. Uh, but overall I would say the Second Wind... Uh, encounter ability benefits characters that are more than likely to get injured during combat, so generally frontline characters. But there are some character classes that arguably don't need it so much because they have other sources of healing. Uh, for example, this barbarian here has a uh, very powerful uh, talent available to them, Savage Defiance, where they can get a huge amount of endurance even if they have a really low might value. So you may not want to invest uh, athletics skill points into certain class builds, even if they are frontline builds. It does benefit all characters or character classes, no matter what their role, even if they very rarely get damaged or targeted. It can be quite useful occasionally now and then. As I mentioned, it benefits characters uh, even more if they have a high might value uh, to increase that. So yeah, it would be significantly more if it had say 20 might, I think I can find a character here. Uh, let's. Uh, this one's got 18 might, but only one point invested yes. in athletics. You can see there it's uh, 31, when normally it would be 25. So yeah, 
definitely getting a lot out of that one athletics point in that circumstance. So I'll quickly show the second win ability within combat, but before I do that, let's quickly mention the knockout injuries. So knockout injuries are actually optional, you don't have to have them on. Uh, it partially incorporates the old fatigue system. Basically, you can gain fatigue as an injury. There are quite a few different generic injuries, including various stages of fatigue. Uh, so basically, this encourages you now to rest more often because the only way you can get rid of uh, knockout injuries is if you rest via a campfire or it's an inn, for example. Let's show an injury, so I'll actually attack one of my party members, in this case, Let's go. Uh So he's sustained a sprained wrist in that friends. circumstance. Now I'll wait for him to get up and Let's attack go. him again. And now he's got bruised ribs. And why not? Let's attack him one more time. Hopefully, Let's we can get go. fatigue on one of these. Uh, doesn't look like I'm going to be able to here. You can actually gain uh, certain specialized injuries if you uh, get knocked out by a certain opponent. For example, if you're knocked out by a phantom, which has freeze attacks, you'll probably get frostbite injuries against them. So it's quite a really fun new feature, and I. Uh, definitely recommend you try it out. That's for my friend. Right, let's stop that combat and actually show the second wind uh, in combat as well, which uh, I said I was going to do. So let's find some opponents over here. Now, Edir actually has very high levels of might, and I've probably invested a certain amount into athletics, so it's uh, five points. So his base amount would be 45. And it gains an extra 18% on that, so that's why it's that amount. Okay. Quick, see. Arguably, he doesn't need athletics so much because he has constant recovery, but uh, it's useful for everyone. In fact, uh, you can only get second wind if you actually invest a point of athletics. So it's probably worthwhile sticking at least a point into athletics for every single character. Is uh, arguably no matter what their might is. Right, so he's lost a lot already. Let's quickly get second wind uh, working before he gets knocked out. So there's 53 back. Worked very quickly or fast uh, to be exact. So I would definitely recommend you invest a certain amount of athletics for certain characters. Uh, definitely frontline characters in the main. Uh, especially ones that don't have uh, their own healing abilities like uh, fighters and barbarians do. Uh, but even with them, it might be worthwhile investing. You definitely want someone within your party to have a pretty high level of athletics, though, so you can do uh, certain scripted interactions, which you'll need it for. Um, yeah, so it'd be very useful for those still. The survival skill changes, in my opinion, are more significant than the athletic skill changes. Uh, so what survival used to do is basically increase the consumable duration, things like potions, uh, by a certain amount of time for every point you invested. Now survival is linked to camping. Uh, so every time you camp, uh, you actually gain a bonus, one of these bonuses here. And uh, basically for every single point you invest in survival, you can actually gain one of these bonuses or increase the level of the bonus you receive uh, if you've already got the first six. So in this case, I have a survival of 10 uh, with this character. So I can actually gain the second rank of the accuracy bonus. So it goes one to six and then seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So there's three ranks of bonuses and six different types of bonus. So let's actually check this out. Uh, I'll exit the screen. And you have to camp, so let's go to the camping option. And this is a new uh, actual menu here. So you can see all of my six party members, they have different options based on the amount of survival they have. So, uh, in this case, this guy only has a couple of survival points invested, so we can only uh, do the first two. Uh, this character is a ranger who I've uh, used a cheat code to level up to a survival of, let's check it out, uh, remind myself here, uh, survival of 16. 
So if I go back into the camp in here, she's actually got the third rank for the first four of these different types of bonuses. It's very, very hard to get your survival up to level 18 and gain the third rank for the last two, but it is potentially possible, especially if you have equipment, it's definitely possible. In fact, I know there's definitely an item that gives a couple of points in survival. So the first uh, bonus is damage reduction, and it levels uh, up in uh, one point of damage reduction for each rank. So this guy has one damage reduction there, uh, she has rank 2, so it's level 2 there, and she has the third one, so it's uh, free damage reduction. The second bonus is healing received, and that's uh, very specific. It's only uh, when they either heal themselves or someone else heals them that they receive the bonus. It's not when they heal someone else. Uh, they wouldn't give someone else 60% in this case, for example. So that's a pretty nice bonus there, and that goes up at 20% each time. And you can see that one's 20%, that one's 40%. The third bonus is movement, so it's one point of movement for each rank. I'll come back to the racial accuracy bonus in a second. The consumable duration goes up 40% per rank, and this is uh, very similar to the old uh, survival bonus, how that used to work, so it's 20%. Uh, for each rank. I believe the third rank is 60% but I don't actually know for sure. I haven't got a character who's uh, got a survival of 17 to check it out. The last bonus is a damage bonus against flank targets. Now I believe that's 10% for each uh, level as well. Uh, you can see that's on level 1, she's on level 2 and I assume the third rank is a bonus of 30%. Now you can actually come up with quite a few com uh, combinations where that would be very useful. Normally, uh, you'd probably only be able to flank opponents if you have a lot of melee party members within your party. But there is a spell the Cypher has. Uh, it's called Phantom Foes. where you, It's basically a area of effect spell that uh, causes opponents to be flanked or think they're being flanked. So you could have your whole party actually uh, camp and uh, select that bonus uh, if you have it with all of them and that would be a very useful combination there. Uh, the first option, the damage reduction in my opinion, it isn't doesn't actually add much damage reduction. If you've only got a point invested in survival with uh, some of your party members though, it's a nice bonus, it's better than nothing. The healing multiplier of uh, 20% that's best used, in my opinion, for characters that get injured a lot. So frontline characters, you may want to uh, invest a couple of points into survival or eight points into survival to get the second rank. Uh, the movement bonus, that's, well, there's quite a few different character classes that uh, specialize in movement. The monk is one. The barbarian actually has a uh, movement talent. Uh, wild Sprint, I think it's called. So there's various characters where you may want to specialize uh, in movement and get a bigger bonus via camping. So that could be a very good idea. Uh, consumable durations, that's mainly potions. So potions are probably best used for frontline characters because usually it helps uh, heal them. There's the odd one which increases damage as well, though, so you may want to uh, have a consumable duration consumable duration for more backline damage per second builds. Uh, the one I haven't mentioned yet is accuracy and this is probably in my opinion the most useful of the bonuses you can get from camping. Sadly though you have to make a decision. It's not against all opponents. It's only against uh, certain creature types. Beasts, primordials, spirits, vessels and wilders. Uh, the Human opponent, human-like opponent, opponents, humanoids aren't actually included here, so you can't get an accuracy bonus against them. But if you know you're coming up against a certain creature type in an area where there's a lot of these creatures, actually selecting the accuracy bonus uh, when you camp is a very good idea. Uh, it's slightly different levels up of ranking as well for the accuracy bonus. If we select... Uh, Edia here, you can see the initial bonus at level 
rank of one is plus ten, and you need to invest four points of survival to get that. At level two, uh, which you have to invest ten points of survival, you actually get a plus fifteen accuracy bonus against the creature type you select. And the last rank, uh, which is survival level of sixteen, you'd actually get a plus eighteen accuracy bonus. So it's only plus three more than the second ranks is ugly not that much so whether or not you'd want to invest that many survival points is open to debate but the whole survival uh, skill now is very very useful and it's probably the skill that you'll invest in uh, most with a lot of your characters because the survival skill is so useful now you will often want to pick colonist as your background for any of your characters where you want to invest most of your skill points into survival. Uh, so it's especially useful for damage dealing type classes like wizards, druids, anyone that you want to do as much damage as quickly as possible. There's only actually three cultures which allow you to pick colonists. Uh, they are Adia, Old Vela, and the last one is the Living Lands. All of the others have various background options but don't include colonists. Colonists is the only one where you can have an extra couple of points into survival. So that may alter uh, how you decide to basically set up your character builds. The culture and background is something you can't actually retrain uh, in inns unlike a tribute. So it is very important to get right arguably when creating your uh, character builds. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty important to know, I reckon. Uh, I always recommend as well, if you're not role-playing, to invest or pick a background that you plan on investing most of your skill points into. So, say, for example, you had a character where you wanted to invest most of your points into mechanics, you'd probably want to pick something like Laborer, or, like I mentioned, if you wanted to invest most of your points into the survival skill, then picking colonists would be a very good idea as well. One thing which may be a bug is that the heal multiplier doesn't actually show up properly in terms of the uh, second wind ability. So you can see here with Edia, uh, we've got a bonus of 53.1. And if I camp with Edia with that heal multiplier, uh, let's do that quickly. Now it should increase, shouldn't it? Uh, it should be 40% with the second rank of that heal multiplier added onto the second wind but you can see quite clearly there that hasn't increased but if I actually get involved in combat yeah. and use that it does actually work alright last time I checked it so let's uh, find out here if it does work okay so we got a 40% amount added on to 50 odd so it should be about 70 odd I think the math's correct so I'll wait for him to get pretty <laughs> injured Oh well, wow. better use it quickly before he dies. I think I might be too late. <laughs> right, luckily he didn't die. You can quite clearly see there, it's 74 I got for that then, which is 40% more than that basically. So it does work the extra heal multiplier. So that's something to uh, take into account as well when you're investing your athletics and also your survival points for especially for frontline characters you can use them as a combination together to give you a really high level of uh, endurance healing ability with them and of course that bonus works uh, for your party members that heal this uh, party member also so say you have a priest like this one here if I were to use holy radiance on him he would get an extra 40% uh, healing from that there so be What's that? Uh, another 20 odd added on. The last three skills, Stealth, Law and Mechanics, haven't changed with the recent patches and the expansion, but I'll mention them for completion's sake, my opinions on those skills and, where you, and uh, whom you should invest them with. So basically, Stealth, first of all, is very useful for uh, characters that open combat. So say you have... Uh, a wizard that you want to get close with a big area of effect or even frontline characters is pretty useful sticking a few points into with them 
uh, you can often open combat with them is a good idea because they usually get targeted then instead of your uh, more squishier members of your party. Uh, so you might want to get close to enemies a certain extent so investing a few points is pretty useful. I'd recommend that you invest quite heavily into self at least with one of your members and I'd recommend that with all of the skills you want someone specializing in uh, each of these probably. Uh, it's especially good for rogues they actually have a talent or an ability where if they get very close to an opponent they actually get a huge damage boost so you may want to invest with a rogue for example. It also works very well with mechanics uh, I'll mention a bit more about that later on when I discuss mechanics though but uh, yeah stealth Definitely with frontline characters invest a few points and have one of your uh, characters invest in it reasonably heavily I'd say at least. Uh, especially if you want to steal stuff as well. That's when uh, stealth is very useful. The law skill has two primary uses. The first of which is used in dialogue. So it's actually very useful to have your player character invest a certain amount into law. Uh, if you want to have certain dialogue options available to you. And also the second use for lore is scrolls. The higher amounts of lore you have, the more powerful scrolls are available for your character to use. So if I actually exit the screen and go into the inventory and the crafting section, we can actually see uh, quite a lot of different types of scrolls. So basically, every couple of uh, points you invest into uh, scrolls, or lore I should say, you get new scrolls available to you. And they're generally more powerful uh, the more lore you invest. So level 1 scrolls, you need to invest uh, 2 lore. Level 2 is 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 uh, for the all six levels of scrolls here. Now the really high levels of scrolls there aren't actually many scrolls available to them so whether or not you'd want to invest 12 points into lore with any of your characters is really debatable. I'd recommend the characters that you actually invest lore into uh, the most are probably the ones that you want to do damage with uh, your damage dealing classes uh, classes that tend to have a lot of might and intelligence that's the key attribute you need to get the very uh, most out of your scrolls you can see if I pick uh, scroll of maelstrom here it's, uh, there's a lot of damage and also area of effect is infected by intelligence as well and any what spells here that have duration which is going to be most of them are uh, going to need intelligence as well so your backline characters, your chanters, uh, your wizards, uh, your priests, your druids, they all actually actually start with a tiny bit of lore. And you may want to have a background like aristocrat which gives a couple of points into lore as well if you want to uh, invest a lot of points into lore with those. It's uh, pretty useful but uh, not the most useful skill in my opinion. So you probably want at least... Uh, one of your party members which is particularly good at lore in my opinion so you can have some very useful scrolls with them but uh, yeah something like survival is more useful or athletics in my opinion. If there's one skill that you definitely want one of your party members to invest highly into it's mechanics. Mechanics is a very very useful skill it allows you to do a variety of things uh, basically it allows you to unlock uh, locks, doors, uh, treasure, uh, so yeah you definitely want one of your party members to invest high into mechanics for that more than likely. Also it allows you to detect hidden items as well uh, so that's very useful. You can also place traps uh, so mechanics is useful for that, it gives you an accuracy boost and it also allows you to disarm traps as well. So all in all mechanics is incredibly useful the character class that has the most starting mechanics is the Rogue. It has a couple of points and it's the only class that has a couple of points. But there are other classes like the Chanter, the Wizards and the Cypher which also have a point in mechanics. It works very well with Stealth as well because you may want your uh, character that specializes in mechanics to 
be at the front of your party in some circumstances looking for traps when it's in a dungeon for example so stealth goes together with that because if your uh, party members at the front of the party is the most likely party member to encounter opponents so they do work well together and you may want to invest in both with whomever within your party specializing in, me in mechanics now something which I should mention to do with mechanics is traps so uh, if I go into the inventory screen here we can see some traps here now traps do damage and many of them also have uh, an ability, a second ability that lasts a certain duration as well so might affects damage and intelligence of course affects how long the duration lasts for for the second ability so the character that you decide to invest highly in mechanics with you may want them to have high levels of intelligence or and or uh, might as well uh, because well to make most use out of the traps if you don't care about using traps at all don't worry about high, having high levels of uh, might or intelligence uh, but um, yeah it is useful if you want to actually use traps occasionally so that concludes this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please help me out by giving this video a like. I'm really grateful to those of you who do that as it helps improve my videos in YouTube's search ranking so people can actually find them in the first place. If you have any comments or questions about this video, if you want to know about something in more detail or you want to request uh, future content, please let me know by using the comment section. And if you like this content, please consider subscribing as well. Check out my playlist for Pillars of Eternity. Uh, there's plenty more content in there that may interest you. Check out my homepage as well for the channel. Uh, there's plenty of Let's Plays and Guide videos for not only Pillars of Eternity, but plenty of other games as well. And also I have a Patreon page. If you want to see the channel survive and thrive and do well, then even these small sort of donations, whether it's one-off or every month, massively helps at the channel. I really need the help. Uh, to keep the channel going so I'm really really grateful to those of you who check out my Patreon page and uh, especially those of you who actually decide to uh, help out by donating right so I believe that's it thank you for watching again and I'll see you next time